Welcome back to the Audio Act Show. Brian Tui is uh, talking with us, author of the book, The Fix is In. Uh, your thoughts on Pete Rose. Has anyone had a gambling addiction the way Pete Rose has since him, or did he kill it? Giamatti oh, kill that? I don't think he killed it. I mean, I don't think anybody, obviously. I find it very strange, actually, that no one since him has come out as a, ga- as a former player, even a current player, and said, yeah, I have a gambling problem. Because if you look at the Gamblers Anonymous website and you read the uh, character traits of an addicted or a compulsive gambler, they match exactly what you'd want in a great athlete. I mean, it's the exact same. Right, and Pete Rose had all that. Yeah. Well, and Pete Rose, Pete Rose should not be in the Hall of Fame. I don't care what anybody says. I think no he should way. be. I think he should never be allowed to wear a uniform again, go near a game as no. a gambling addict, but I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. No, I because think. let me tell you, when he was betting as a manager for the Reds, okay, and supposedly just betting on the Reds, although John Dowd, the investigator, I inven- interviewed him, he investigated Pete Rose back in the day. He said they did have actually have evidence that Rose bet against his own team, but they didn't pursue it. I'm sure Giamatti found that out. Yeah. Well, they, all they cared about was proving he bet so they could get him out. Because right. they investigated him, you know, back when he was playing, back in the late 60s, early 70s, and they couldn't prove anything at the time, but they were highly suspicious that he had a gambling problem and was betting on baseball then. So it's something that never really left Major League Baseball's mind. But when he was as a manager, and he was supposedly just betting the Reds, here's what would happen. is In game one of a three-game series, he'd bet on his own team to win, and he'd, bl- he'd burn out his bullpen to make sure he won that game because he had bet on it. Game two, he would do the same thing. He'd bet on his team. They had a good starter. He would use his bullpen as strong and as hard and his bench as hard as he could to make sure he won that game. And then game three, he wouldn't bet on it. Now, A, that was a tip-off to the bookies to say, hey, guess what? The manager's not betting on the team tonight. What should we do? Because they knew they were booking Pete Rose's bets. And at the same time, he'd already really kind of manipulated all three games in his own favor because of his gambling problem. I mean, he was, though he wasn't necessarily fixing games, he was altering the outcome of games clearly because of the way he was betting on them. And to me, that should definitely keep him out of the Well, a gambling, well, I hear you. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) A gambling addict to me would bet probably that third game and bet against his team. But he didn't. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, interesting. Look, some stuff is so obvious. Ollie Liston you have here. That phantom punch. You, you, there's no yeah. way Ollie hit Sonny Liston. And Sonny no, Liston was built right. like a brick crap house, whatever you want to call it. And that is the most obvious fix I think I've ever seen in a major sporting event. Ollie Liston, without question, you're not getting an argument from me there. He he did not hit the guy. And Sonny Liston looks scared of, of Muslims and the mafia going down. Uh, it really was, ooh, it gives me the chills to watch that because Sonny Liston looks like a scared guy, and then uh, Ali just came nowhere near him. Uh, the Another 80s Ali fight. Huh? One of the things I write about in my other book, Larceny Games, is the Ali second fight against Spinks when he won the heavyweight title for the third time. You yeah. know, the FBI investigated that fight for being fixed. Yeah, it's Spinks. The first and third time Ali won the heavyweight championship, both fights were fixed in his favor. Yeah. Because the guy in Spinks' camp came to the FBI and said, look, I think this fight's being set up. I think this, 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 this is going to happen, and Ali's going to beat Spinks. And he goes, if all this falls into play, he goes, I'm coming back to you, and we're going to go after it. Well, you know what? Everything he said was going to happen happened, and it's in the FBI file beforehand. Wow. And then the informant didn't come back to the FBI. He just stepped away, and the FBI, because they lost their source, basically yeah. dropped the case. Yeah, Spinks, that's what I, it is shady. Spinks was a young guy, good, good boxer, and uh, a guy Ali, you probably could get. Ali. Huh? Against an old, aging, bad... No, I know. Yeah, no. And a guy you could probably get to, a guy like Spinks. But um, real quick, the 80s Knicks are mentioned. Give me what you think about the 80s Knicks. Well, the, the FBI file, according to what I found, it basically said that the... I think it was the 81, 82 Knicks were saving points as a favor, basically, to their cocaine dealer. Okay. And what the FBI found out was that the nice cocaine favor. dealer was a known gambler. He was betting <laughs> three to 500 bucks a night on these NBA games. <laughs> God. And then suddenly he was betting $10,000 a game against the Knicks, and he won seven out of eight bets. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Listen, of course, that, that, that happens, man. It happens. Yeah. And at the same time, and I'm not accusing him of doing this, but one of the main things was Michael Ray Richardson, who was the first player ever banned by the NBA for drugs. Troubled guy, yeah. Was a cocaine addict. Right. And he was on that team. Yeah. So no, there's some mm. sort of correlation. Like I said, I'm not saying Michael Ray Richardson did anything because I can't tell from the FBI file who the players were. But the fact is that there was something highly suspicious going on. But again, the FBI couldn't prove it. So the NBA can say, well, you know, it never happened. Chloe, I'll tell you what. Uh, that's, you know, you can't come out and say Michael Ray Richardson did something, but it makes no. a lot of sense that he would. Uh, John, any last thoughts? 
for uh, uh no, Ryan. I mean I, I guess you go through uh NFL, baseball, NBA, NHL, and even NASCAR. Even NASCAR. There's fixing in NASCAR. Like, is this well, current? Yeah. That well, would seem pretty easy. I guess you're right. Know, I guess it was. You know yeah. horse races are fixed, right? And we know without a doubt horse races have been fixed. Right. And the reason they fix horse races is the horses don't talk. They can't tell you what's yeah. going on. They can't tell that they're being shocked. They can't tell you that they've been drugged. They can't tell you how the jockey was riding them. The same with NASCAR cars. They can't tell you that someone messed with their engine. They can't tell you how the driver was driving it. They can't tell you if some fuel additive was put in. It's actually highly easy to fix a car race. Now, granted, mm-hmm. someone crashes you, that'll ruin the fix. But we know, again, Formula One, just a year or two ago, one driver was told to intentionally crash another driver. Just last year in NASCAR, one driver was told to crash intentionally so another driver won the race. It's happened. We know it's happened. And yet no one, you know, there's no outrage about it. It's just like, oh, yeah, so so what? Well, uh, it's not a legitimate competition then, is it? Uh, yeah, they might have been on the same team, those guys. Well, so what? No, no yeah, well, I don't know. Listen, it's a <laughs> I mean, fascinating, it's, look, it's, I, I get fat. I'm, I'm a guy who's gambled. I'm fascinated by stuff like this. I would recommend the book, but you got to take everything with a grain of salt here. It, uh, it's the fixes in. Brian, are you a, are you a big gambler yourself? No, you know what, actually, I don't gamble on the games at all. In fact, because I talk to these gamblers, I've talked to bookmakers and that sort of thing, I intentionally don't gamble because I don't want them to think that I'm prying them for inside information on my own betting habits. Well, it corrupts, I, I it corrupts, very, it corrupts you, know. you, too. I mean, corruption starts with, you know, uh, sin. You know, people get into this stuff and they, they can't get out and it becomes a way out and it becomes... Pretty shady, pretty dark. Uh, interesting yeah. subject in, in the least. The fix is in the showbiz manipulations of the NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, and NASCAR uh, by Brian Tui. Brian, uh, thanks a lot, man. Thanks for coming yeah, on. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. All right, All right brother. Care. Back after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.